Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. I'm going to construct your life. You're going to construct your life. It's kind of a new thing I've been saying these days. We've got Mr. Hollick in the house. Don't call him master. Uh, Mr. Ray, how are you doing, my brother? Doing great, man. How are you? Doing good, man. I am beyond excited to have this conversation with this this amazing human being. Um, What I like to do with my guests is kind of start their story where they want to, and then we'll kind of go from there. So I'll let you start it where you want to. That is a, you know, it's funny that you, that's how you start your thing. Because anytime I think about where the story started, I'm, I'm kind of lost because there are so many amazing instances that have happened in the past decade. That it's like, did it start there? Did it start there? Um, but I can honestly say, I think the biggest catalyst of growth was when I consciously stepped into the journey of, uh, backpacking. I backpacked through New Zealand for four months and Southeast Asia for six months. And the doing that in this physical realm kind of triggered the energetic and spiritual realm of stepping onto the hero's journey. And, you know, I was tapping into that. Uh, wanderer archetype, which has been one of the strongest ones in my life. So that's where my journey started. And when you travel for that long um, with nothing but a backpack to your name, um, it's a game changer. It completely changes so many things. And then after that, uh, stayed in the States for a couple months, saved up some money and moved down to Austin, which was the next chapter of when everything started. And uh, yeah, I've been in Austin for five years now, and it's just been a roller coaster of change and growth. And what I find in most times when people meet me, I either make them leave their job. I make them travel (laughs) to Europe or something like that. Uh, (laughs) It's just, I I truly believe that people get caught up in the same thing over and over again. So I want to unpack that, that backpacking experience and kind of, you know, why do you like, was it something that was calling you or just something you wanted to do in your life to say you did it and kind of like what you learned from that trip? Cause I don't, I don't think enough people travel is kind of the thing. I'm yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, well, first off, I want to say within our culture, I think it's very subtly, the seeds are planted uh, to make people believe that traveling is dangerous. Um, yes. When it, it, when it, you know, don't get me wrong. There are aspects of travel um, where if you're not smart and on your toes, it can be dangerous, but for the most part, it, it is not, you know, human beings across the entire world are still human beings with love and compassion. Um, and they love meeting individuals from other cultures. So the reason why I started backpacking, I actually have to give a shout out to my ex-girlfriend, Carissa, who it was her idea to do it. And I had no idea that backpacking was a thing. Um, didn't even consider travel at that point in my life. And she was like, we should save money and do this. And so I didn't go backpacking by myself. I went with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, which is a completely different experience. There are pros, pros and cons to traveling with people or by yourself. And uh, so she just convinced me to go out there and we bought a one-way ticket and just to see what would happen. And it was an incredible journey. Just And when I say life-changing, just it, when you're in that state of consciousness of you don't have any responsibilities other than take care of yourself and take care of your backpack and hike mountains and just be an experienced life. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, and I would say my biggest takeaway from that experience is that oh, there was a lot, but one of the most important ones that I apply to my life now is that everything ends up working out the way it's meant to. I think that was the biggest, um, biggest blessing within the journeys because when you're traveling through New Zealand or Southeast Asia, Asia, especially where English isn't the first language for anybody out there, um, things go awry no matter what, whether it's when you're traveling from one town to another or even ordering food or trying to book a hostel, things always go not according to plan and you figure it out as you go. And sometimes it ends up better than expected. And so just by God's grace and with faith, things always end up the way they're meant to. Well, it's funny that you say that because I, you know, 
and I'm, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a, maybe it's old wiring in my brain or just kind of the way I feel about myself. Sometimes I have a pessimistic, which is hard for, <laughs> which is hard for people to understand. But when I'm traveling outside of my element, I have a pest. And sometimes we're like, well, I don't know if I really want to do that and all that stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I swear to God, every time I've just let go and like, maybe it's a random place that we went, or maybe it was something that we didn't almost do, but we did it. It winds up being the most like magical experience we've ever had. And, and I think, mm-hmm. I think sometimes you have to put that voice aside and you, and you, and if you're, if you're hanging around the same people and you're doing the same things over and over again, you're probably going to have the same life you had. And, and I agree with you. I think it's alarming to me how dangerous people think or like how that dangerous they actually think traveling is. It's really not that bad at all. Like, like uh, dude, and uh, same thing in America, there are places that you shouldn't go at night. Right. There's places you shouldn't go out that place. Like, it's really not that like, like it's, it's all relative. Like you just have to like explore and you have to open your heart. And I, and I promise you'll mm-hmm. get, you'll get more out of it than you're probably given out. Yeah, absolutely. And any of the times that I, uh, we heard about someone that either got into trouble or something bad happened to a traveler, it was something that was like, they were out traveling alone late at night after a night of drinking on the wrong side of town. And it's like, okay, if you're in a foreign country, obviously don't do that. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't so, agree more. So and while you're in Austin now, like what, what is your, what is your main gig? Like, what do you do? Cause like, I don't, I try to tell people what you do. I don't <laughs> think you're, I don't think you're a masseuse. I, I, it's, <laughs> I don't like, right. It's not like traditional, correct or not. Yeah. I mean, I work, I have my own practice as a massage therapist. So in layman's terms, like I do massage therapy. I do house calls and work on the physical body, but the energy and intention and prayer put behind every session is deeper than just, just massage therapy, you know? And that's something that I've struggled to accept for some time now. I tell people that, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just a massage therapist and people like yourself and some of my closest friends as well. They're like, dude, it's not just massage therapy. You have to stop saying that it's a, it's a subtle level of healing sometimes beyond the conscious realm of just energy exchange. And, you know, you're honestly, man, like you, you said, you're one of the biggest hype men. Like you are one of my biggest hype men. Like anytime I get a session from you and you reach out, you're like, dude, I just feel better beyond the yeah. physical. I'm more, I'm more dialed in energetically. I'm flushed. I worked on two of my friends uh, the other day that just got done with a long week of being um, in a leading an event in another country and travel. And they were just feeling drained, exhausted, energetically, just like knocked out on my table for 90 minutes each. And both of them, when they got off, they're like, I'm fixed. Like beyond the physical, I'm fixed. Thank you. So, yeah. And I just want to give everybody context to this. Like, I think this week I've got 55 zoom calls. So this is probably one of my biggest weeks. So, so I'll definitely be calling you, but, but long story short, uh, before COVID, I was getting a massage a week from like a massage envy and stuff like that. And I, mm-hmm. I met a guy through a friend. His name is Luke uh, Parsons and he's an ex recovery guy as well. And he does, you know, fascia and, and mm-hmm. all the energy healing and he's a contractor. And, and I said, listen, I, I feel like I'm off. This was like early in the year. I was like, I feel like I'm off. Like I started taking on more coaching clients Um like taking on their energy and everything and something I'm trying to learn how to deal with and, and, and all that stuff like that. And he said, I think this is the guy for you. And so you came over and, and we did a session and like, we hit it off just like that. But, but guys, I, I, like this show for me is for me to give you a window into my life. So you can maybe, you know, add value to yours and, and so on. So I'm going to tell you exactly how it goes down. My brain does not, close. Like I'm mm-hmm. literally working most days from, you know, in the morning and, and obviously on the weekends, it's not as heavy, but when, when Ray comes over and does a massage on me for like 90 minutes, we listen to meditation music and uh, like I might smoke a little weed beforehand or whatever, but it's the only time in my day or my week, especially where I can stop and the phone puts mm-hmm. down and I don't really care. And, 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 this word keeps coming up this week and it's, I think it'll hit you hard too. And and I've got some deep conversations for the other podcast today, this word permission, Mm -hmm. like I'm going to, I'm going to explain it the best way I can. Cause Gary V explained it very well when he wanted to get healthy, 
by by me putting the responsibility in you to come over and do it and I've paid you a service, I'll show up for you because that's the type of person I am. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I give myself permission in those 90 minutes to just shut it down. Like, I don't care if the world's blowing up. He's here. He drove up here. I'm paying money. And so for me to do that, it allows me to shut it off. And the best way I can describe it is I literally meditate for an hour and a half and kind of close. I was telling somebody this yesterday. I close multiple loops in my brain. And then when I get done, I'm a different person. Like even Cassie's like, dude, you're, you're a different human when you come out of there. And I just feel recharged and ready. But what blew me away was when you said that you've been getting ideas Mm-hmm. When you do, when you do the body work in my room, because of like, my brain's always working in here and stuff like that. And I just love it. Like in your opinion, just what you know about the body and healing and everything. And I'm just going to throw a number out there just for fun, for shits and grins. I think that 90% of America has no idea how to handle their energy. Oh, 95%, you know, <laughs> maybe 97. And so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so talk us through, let's just, first of all, let's unpack what they don't understand. And then let's pa- unpack how they can, how type a, you know, hard charging entrepreneurs or investors can, can, can help themselves feel better. So like, first let's talk about what they don't understand and then we'll get to tactical stuff. Okay, sure. So what people don't understand, as far as I can tell, is that our culture is very do, 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 like work hard all the time, get shit done. It's a very yang or masculine and masculine, feminine. When I say these words, for those who don't know, it doesn't necessarily mean male or female. It's just our best way to personify an energy. Um, so it's a very masculine way to approach life. And if you approach life with too much masculine energy without balancing it out properly, you know, we start getting tense and trauma starts building in the body. And as far as energetically, what people don't understand is that all things are waves and vibrations. Um, So if we're constantly in the state of vibration of masculine energy and we can't allow ourselves or give ourselves permission to receive and just surrender to the more yang or yin feminine energy of massage therapy or breath work or meditation, there's going to be an imbalance and it's going to be manifested through the physical body, through stress, pain, aches, you know, mental patterns, negative mental patterns. Um, so I want to honor you. I was thinking about this the other day as well. Like I see how hard you work and you are just constantly grinding and you're focused on your mission and you're crushing it. And when I come over, you're just like, zonked. You're like, this is my time. This is for me. I surrender to the experience and you allowing yourself to do that for 90 minutes, once a week, once every other week, once every third week is I would recommend more, but yeah, allowing yourself. Oh, allowing oh, yourself to- oh don't worry. As soon as, 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 as soon as these businesses start paying off, you might be here every day. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's solid. But you see the point allowing yourself to do that even once a month. Yeah. is like, it's a game changer for your energetic field, which is going to manifest through the physical body. The, these physical bodies, the physical realm is just a representation of the energetic and vibrational field. So when we have negative thought patterns or we are constantly grinding, it's going to manifest through like the imbalances over time are going to manifest through a hurt shoulder, a cricked neck, a bad low back. Um, well, and I think, I think the most important thing, right? And, and I talk, you know, I've talked to a million entrepreneurs is the most important thing is that people don't understand, like when your shoulder hurts or like your leg hurts, like your body's trying to tell you something, mm-hmm. a-holes, mm-hmm. like, like, <laughs> yeah. like wake up, like, like we become like something that I'm digging into. And, and you know what? It's funny that you say that I, I I'm the type of person, like if I'm going to do something like, yeah, I, I might fight it all the way, but I'll definitely surrender in the moment. Like if I feel obligated to sell. But what I'm what, what I'm trying to get people to understand is like we're so disconnected from like our mind and our body and our soul. Like we're we're the most mm-hmm. disconnected society ever. And you know, guys, when you make a million dollars or you do these things and you're still unhappy, it's because you're entirely disconnected. Like they mm-hmm. they it's a study shown like you know people in the recovery space 
if you take them out in, in nature and you go hiking with them, they're more adapt to listen to what you have to say. It's like, interesting, you know, and, and like, so like, there's like, you know, and so like something my buddy Sal taught me and it's very interesting. Cause it, once I bet, went back and did studies, I looked on it. Like if you watch Tony Robbins, he never puts his chin down. Like mm-hmm. he's always here and he's open. Right. And the chest is open. And so, and so when I have a coaching client and they're in a bad way or a victim mindset, where's their chin down here. Mm -hmm. And so when I raise my chin, they have to match my energy. And just by me being up here, it raises them up. And it's amazing what that can do to them. Cause I realized something in my early coaching. Do you know what coaching is? Energy, energy, Mm -hmm. because with energy, there's a possibility that we can get change with change. We can get better. That's it. And, and it's like this thing, right. Where like, I have a girl I interviewed yesterday, perfect example in our recovery, uh, free group, uh, that we, the recovery patient, she met us three months ago. She'd been sober a year and a half in three months. She's lost 30 pounds and got off every medication that she was on blood pressure medicine and everything. Guys, the answer is not in the doctor's office. The answer is and you caring about what's going in your body, water, exercise, movement, and taking care of yourself. And those things alone, along with a little fasting here and there, can change everything for you. And, and we've become beholden on, you know, the quick fix. And it, it drives me crazy. Yeah, no, amen to all of that. I would say, I would like to say that we can't completely dismiss the benefits of say antidepressants and particular medications within the Western, the Western approach to medicine. Um, However, I would say that when it comes to taking care of the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual body, 80% of Americans or 80% of really Westerners, anybody, uh, they really just need a little bit of nature. They need to take care of themselves better. They need to shift their mindset. They need to implement a mobility strengthening uh, regimen on their physical body to get them out of pain, maybe a little massage therapy, but to the level of money and humans that are being pumped into the medical system to just take a pill and get them out of the office as soon as possible. That's not the answer. It's not the answer for most people. And I only know this because one of my coaching clients is building one of the biggest health insurance companies in the world. And I'm a consultant for their company. And they tell me stats that get me angry as hell. Like that more Americans are prescribed two pills than prescribed none. No. Yes. I don't don't like that. (laughs) Because they're taking one and they have to take another one to combat the, the, the problems of the first one. Yeah. Uh, It's it's not okay, but that's okay. That's why, that's why we have conversations like this. You know, I'll be honest with you though. I know you're a young, you're a young buck, but, and I'm, I'm an, I'm I'm an older gentleman. The conversation is more prevalent than it's ever been. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we're there and we got a lot of things to fix, but I would say that the consciousness of America is definitely a lot higher than it has been in the past. Now, that being said, I travel a lot. And it's kind of scary, yeah. like because and I'll just talk in, in broad terms. There's a great uh, documentary out there called Fasting. And all these people are, you know, type two diabetes is prevalent and everywhere. And they found if you fast per, per prolong, that it can get rid of it completely. Like the answer is not like, yes, I agree with the antidepressants. I've been on them, like all that stuff, like, you know, Adderall, I, I'm all that. So mm-hmm. what can people do? Let's say they have little money, right? Let's say they have little knowledge. Let's just give them like a starter kit to like start changing some things that they do for, in their life, like like they, that they could start today. First things first is mindset. The, the, the moment you decide that you are worthy of good health and that you deserve a good life is when things start to change. So you can... Do all the research. You can go to the gym a handful of times the first week. You are like, I should take care of myself. But if you if you haven't locked in the fact that you deserve a good life and that you are worthy of loving yourself, it can only last so long. I truly believe that. You know, I used to think that health overall is 
and I still believe this to a degree, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and that you should just start with the physical body. But the mental aspect of it, I think you really need to start with locking in the fact that I'm going to change my life. I only have this one life to live, and I deserve to have the most abundant, beautiful life I could possibly imagine. And until you legitimately believe that in your mind and in your heart, there's only so far you can go before you start repeating those loops of, I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say mindset is first and foremost, the most important thing. And then after that, um, I would say me personally, I, I don't have all the answers, but I think a connection with spirit is one of the biggest things that plagues our culture. Um, and that is a simple process, but it's not easy. You know, people, they sit down, they're like, I want to start a meditation practice to change my mind and change my life. And after three or four of them, they stop because it kind of shows you the aspects of your life that do need to change um, mm -hmm. in order to manifest and create that life that you want for yourself. And most people that scares a lot of people away, which is understandable. The parts of you that have to die, have to be burned away it physically actually hurts the neural pathways in our brain and it's scary and it's hard, but this all comes full circle back to the yin approach of life and allowing yourself to do these things and stepping into chaos, which is travel. People are afraid of travel because traveling to a new country is stepping away from the fire within the forest, which is order. That's our ancestral brain being like, this is safe. And then going out into the darkness and finding the treasure that's within that. Mm -hmm. um it's hard it's difficult yeah. but it gives life meaning yeah you know what that is huh. entrepreneurship yep <laughs> amen amen you know, I, I i tell everybody no guys none of this is going to feel comfortable at first and and i'll be honest with you meditation and journaling is my biggest bugaboo but i journaled 26 days in a row and i've sat down for five minutes. And as my buddy from Spain says, shut the fuck up for five minutes. And it's changed my life because it, it, it relieves some of the thoughts that are going on in my mind. Like Cassie doesn't understand how I can control all this in my mind. Like interview seven, I interviewed nine people yesterday. I know everybody's story, like none of it's written down and it's just how I operate. It's not a big deal, but, but just journaling and taking the time and, and taking some time for myself and, but, but like, I think the advice that I want to give to everybody is like what I suggest for my coaching clients is like, start with one practice, one practice, five minutes a day. Once you've that's incorporated in your lifestyle, it takes 21 days for uh, a new habit, 90 days for a lifestyle. Then you, then you move in the next one and the next one. And I promise you that if you take a little time for yourself and you, you know, like, you know, there's a study out there, like 60% of Americans don't even take their vacation days. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so like we know they're not getting massages. Like we know they're not, you know, and I was talking to somebody the other day, you know, what's crazy, especially because I do 75 hard. I know they're not drinking enough water. I, mm -hmm. I think, I think America as whole is dehydrated. I really do. Totally. No doubt. Yeah. And so like, guys, let, let me say that out loud. Like 70, 80% of your body is made up of water and you don't even care about what's going in your body. Like we've got to take some time. So now I want to get into the body work stuff and maybe just some tactical like things that maybe they don't have the money to pay for somebody like you. Maybe they can just, you know, get a $5 ball on in, in, in Amazon. Just what are some techniques and stuff? I know we're on you know audio, but what are some things that you can describe to them that would help them out? Well, so it's difficult. everybody knows the foam roller. So why don't you go to the foam roller? Yeah, it's it's difficult because everyone knows a foam roller, but proper foam rolling technique, nobody knows that. So yeah, everyone everyone finds you know their calf or their hamstring or their back, and they fly up and down it because it it's a little tender and it feels good in the moment, and then afterwards it feels good for five or ten minutes before a workout. But that's not going to fix your problem. So um, I'm actually working on creating just video content on YouTube that's accessible for everybody to just hop on that. and yeah. And just learn and implement proper foam rolling techniques for their body. Um, and I would say to make it as simple as possible for everybody, let's just imagine foam rolling your calf. You throw your calf on the foam roller. Don't lift yourself up and fly back and forth up and down on it. 
just look for the most tender spot on your calf by just gently moving around. You find the most tender spot and you just sit. Again, this goes back to the yin approach to life. You sit and you allow and you breathe. You don't force yourself into it because that's not going to give any release, even though it's like for you psychopaths who love the pain. Um, you just find the most tender spot and you sit and imagine this is a foam roller. This is the hard tissue. You're just allowing it to melt around the foam roller for, mm -hmm. it usually takes 30 seconds to two minutes. That's it. It's not pretty. It's not, there's no zazz behind it. It looks kind of boring, but if you find that right spot, it is kind of, it's intense and that's it. That's trigger point therapy in a nutshell. That's all you have to do, but rolling up and down back and forth on it feels good in the moment, but it's not going to get you a release and it's not going to make you more mobile. I love it. And through, uh, just, you, we don't need details of who they are, but you work with a lot of, you know, type A's and a lot of entrepreneurs from what I've yep. seen on Instagram. Just what it, what have you learned about working on such a wide uh, group of people and kind of just like, I would imagine the same thing in my coaching, everything kind of runs. There's a main vein through everybody, no matter where they are in the country. Is there certain things that you're seeing that entrepreneurs or type A's can be looking out for that, that you're seeing the same kind of things happening in all of them? Yeah, there's a, there's a pattern that most of us have from neck, shoulder, upper body, lower body. Um, the thing that I will admit here is that massage therapy is a great catalyst for the healing that you're capable of, but it's holistic, whole meaning there are multiple elements to it. And massage therapy is the release aspect of taking care of your body, but you also need to mobilize and strengthen your body. And the big thing is... Um, most entrepreneurs or, you know, most people who work these days sit at a desk and do a lot of this. You got to open up your chest. You got to release this muscle back here called the levator. Um, and you have to strengthen the lower fibers of the trap to kind of keep your shoulders down and back. I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but there is a very particular strategy. And this goes back to, this could help 80% of the people out there that have neck, shoulder, upper back issues. You release this, you release this, you mobilize this, you strengthen this. You do that consistently for two weeks to a month. You're going to not only naturally be pinned back in better position, you're going to be feeling way better. And, and this is something I've been putting a lot of thought into mm -hmm. the thought, the negative thought patterns that we all have, you know, because of whether it be childhood trauma or just everyday trauma um, manifests through the physical body. We went over that. But if you consciously step into having a daily or every other day practice of releasing your soft tissue, that energetic negative energy that you are putting into the soft tissue is going to be released. I've noticed that when I'm consistent with my foam rolling and when I'm consistent with my release techniques, and then I follow it up with breath work and meditation, my breath work and meditation is way deeper. And I actually have emotional releases sometimes mm -hmm. after like a really good foam rolling session. And I'm like, my body feels way better. It's, it's fascinating. I love that. Guys, if you are in the Austin area and this man is not working on you, I don't know what you're doing. It's just straight up. He's changed my life. And that's why I wanted to have him on here. And we're just scratching the surface on everything that we could talk about. And the good news is, is I think. Yep. Yeah. I just decided we're going to do a video session in person that I'm going to release on my social platforms to accompany this, uh, this podcast. So it'll be like a free offering that we can give some tips and techniques so we can actually give some provided value and we'll mm -hmm. record that at my house or something like that. I've got some cameras here or, or your house or something. And uh, we'll, we'll, we want to, cause it, it needs to be said, it needs to get out there. It needs to be talked about more because you need to understand that your body needs healing. Even if you don't think anything's happening, the, the pounding of the sitting Right. And, and the lifting of the weights, which, which I do believe I'm, I'm guilty of it too, but I do believe that everybody in the gym is lifting weights wrong too. So there's a lot of things that need to go because I realized when I, when I met a chiropractor and when I was doing the Ironman training is that I was so worried about my shoulders and my chest and my legs that I didn't focus on my core at all. And because mm -hmm. my core was messed up, it was affecting every part of my body. And, and so now I've been heavily focused on the core and it's changed the way I feel and just repositioned everything. And it's, it's super important. Absolutely. And something that 
for further motivation to take care of your body for those who are who have stepped onto the spiritual practice or who are interested in doing so. These physical bodies, and this is coming from Ram Das more than anything, these physical bodies are the vehicle for the work that we're meant to do on this planet. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so even if you're hyper focused on your mission, which a lot of these entrepreneurs that are listening are, that's fine, that's great. You know that it's a calling from God to create these products or to be this sort of coach, but these physical bodies need to be taken care of because if you don't, or if you do rather think of the ripple effect of how much better or how more, how much more effective your work could be if you were 100% dialed in mm-hmm. almost hundred percent of the time, instead of only 20% of the time when you take a vacation. Yeah. I tell you what, have back spasm once and tell me if you're not going to start taking it yourself. That's what changed my life when I, when yeah. my back, when my back went out and it made me rethink everything. So if people want to find about your journey and what you do, how would they do that? What's the best way to get a hold of you? The best way would be on Instagram uh, at reese.master. That's R H Y S dot master, M A S T E R. Uh, if you want to book a session, there's a link in my bio, or you can go to mendatx.com, M E N D A T X.com. And if you're in the Austin area, he's uh, he likes to have a good time too. So he's every Wednesday he's out in Zelker Park, and <laughs> you can play games, maybe get a little tune up. Uh, maybe one day uh, the the old man will go down there and make a guest appearance. Dude, uh, maybe... you got to come out. We have so much fun. All right, so listen, dude. Uh, I think Wednesday I'm playing golf in. Uh, in, in San Antonio. So maybe I'll catch it on the way back up. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely make it out there. Uh, guys, if you like this episode, make sure you send it out to your friends. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Mahalo. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learn. For show notes, resources, and more information on -on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.